What training method reigns supreme for endurance athletes? Is it high-volume training, also known as HVT? Perhaps it's threshold training, often referred to as THR. Could it be high-intensity interval training, better known as HIT? Or does the crown belong to a combination of these, known as polarized training or POEL? This burning question led to an intriguing study, the results of which might just surprise you. Four groups of endurance athletes, runners, cyclists, triathletes, and cross-country skiers, were randomly assigned to one of these four training methods for a period of nine weeks. Their training intensity was heart rate controlled, and their endurance performance was measured using an incremental test, work economy, and peak oxygen uptake tests. The results were quite revealing. Polarized training demonstrated the greatest increase in peak oxygen uptake, with an impressive rise of 11.7%. It also significantly improved the time to exhaustion during the ramp protocol by 17% and peak velocity or power by 5%. Interestingly, both polarized training and high-intensity interval training resulted in an increase in velocity or power at 4 millimoles per liter of blood lactate. Polarized training improved it by approximately 8%, while high-intensity interval training increased it by 5.6%. High-intensity interval training increased peak oxygen uptake by 4.8%, but also had an unexpected effect. It reduced body mass by 3.7%, a change that was not observed in the other groups. On the other hand, high-volume training and threshold training didn't contribute much to the party. Apart from slight improvements in work economy and threshold training, both these methods didn't result in any significant improvements in the measured variables of endurance performance. As we delve deeper into the results of the study, it's crucial to address the limitations and potential future perspectives. The study utilized a standardized methodology of performance diagnostics, including an incremental test and VO2 peak ramp protocol, to evaluate the effects of the four endurance training interventions on key variables of endurance performance. While these tests offer valuable insights, they may not directly correlate with specific competition situations such as a time trial. Therefore, future research is needed to establish this connection. Furthermore, the study showed a significant increase of about 11% in VO2 peak with polarized training within a span of nine weeks. This is a substantial improvement for well-trained endurance athletes. However, we must put this into perspective within the context of annual training periodization. The long-term effects of polarized training need to be evaluated in more comprehensive long-term training studies. This will help us understand the sustainability of these improvements and their implications on athletes' overall performance over time. Remember, science is a continuous process, and each study adds another piece to our understanding of the bigger picture. So, what's the takeaway from this study? Polarized training resulted in the greatest improvements in most key variables of endurance performance in well-trained endurance athletes. HIT led to a decrease in body mass and less pronounced increases in VO2 peak compared with previous findings. While threshold training or high-volume training alone did not lead to further improvements in performance-related variables, the beauty of polarized training lies in its comprehensive approach, for example combining the polar opposites of low-intensity and high-intensity training to optimize results. So, if you're an endurance athlete looking for the best training method to boost your performance, it looks like polarized training might just be your golden ticket. And there you have it, a glimpse into the intricate world of endurance training. If you found this analysis intriguing, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay tuned to Sports Science Updates for the latest in sports science research.